Hello guys, my name is Angel, welcome back to a new episode of Dev++. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about testing a remote API using JAS or with JAS using Mox, right? So this is the scenario, right? You have an API, an external uh, API uh, that you expose to your users or to different applications and different users. Uh, and your API is composed by multiple services. And some of those services and some of those functions are communicating with external APIs, right? Such as Stripe, Shopify, you know, you name it. Could be private systems, could be multiple things. Just uh, for the sake of this example, we're just gonna call it an external API. Could be a component, a uh, different component of your uh, same system. Uh, and you still don't want to rely on that to be online in order to make a proper test, right? Um, again, I'm, ca I'm calling this services or service functions. Uh, your API could also not use this, you know, uh, name or division, could also use handlers, controllers, or, you know, um, some sort of like a synonym of, of this. It's basically where you have your business logic, right? So let's get, let's get to work. So I created a small project sample that I'm going to put, I'm going to upload online uh, to the repo and I'm going to put the link on the video, description of the video. So basically what I'm doing here is this is my test file. This is where I want to build my test, right? I'm creating, as I was saying, a service function, right? For creating a report uh, for some invoices and my service function connects to Stripe, right? It, it pulls some invoices from Stripe I'm also using uh, an API function here, which is it could be uh, determined or could be named also as a different service uh, or just like an API for a library. Um, you know, you can actually don't have to use this abstraction. You can directly mock the Stripe client. But for now, I'm just going to use this abstraction just because that's normally how I recommend uh, you to work, right? Everything behind a function. Uh, for you to be able to, uh, you know, have more flexibility when things change or would you have to make updates, right? Or you have to extend your, uh, your API. So <clears throat> again, just uh, here, I'm, I'm not exposing any web service here. For now, I'm just leaving that, uh, you know, HTTP or handlers or uh, maybe controllers layer outside of this scope. I have a function. I have a service function that is called fetch invoices report by date and then uh, that function calls an external uh, uh, sorry it calls another function which calls uh, the stripe api right uh, to pull the data and then uh, you know basically I'm, I'm you know i'm doing something very simple i'm getting all the invoices and i'm you know just grouping the total amount due total amount paid total amount remaining and i'm returning that uh you know for the for the service right uh, if you're curious about how this invoice type look like, it is here. I have all the types here. It's simple. It has an ID, an amount due, an amount paid, amount remaining, user ID, created, and currency, right? All right, so let's uh, get their hands dirty, right? So first of all, I want to test this function that is working properly. So what I will be doing will be, you know, just creating, uh, calling this function from here. It is in a sync function, so I have to uh, make it an await, right? I auto complete, uh, you know, start date and end date. Uh, that doesn't really matter for now. Let me just squish this here just to get it looking. And I have a service context, that we, which is a pattern that I uh, normally use for services. It's just a context variable where I put like everything that I need to send to my services, right? So for now, what I'm going to do is. I'm gonna just organize this a little bit, right? I'm just gonna put like an empty um, context here. This now I have my service context. I'm just gonna also organize this a, uh, this a little bit. This is gonna be my end date. This is gonna be my start date just to comply with the signature of the uh, function. I prefer this to be constant because that's not gonna change, right? This is a wait, so my sync, my test should be a sync, right? So perfect. Right now, this should, uh, you know, pull and execute the 
function, if I run correctly, but it's just going to throw an error because uh, he's going to try to call this function and this is just not going to be available, at least not at a test time, right? A test run time, right? So what is the solution? Uh, mux, right? Um, there's a really good documentation for Jax uh, and Mux, right? If you have used it before or not, right? Basically, a mock is a stop or a fake function that you use to replace another function to simulate results or to, uh, you know, in a more advanced level or a more advanced test to, uh, you know, check if the function was called, you know, with which arguments, you know, what should be returning and stuff like that, right? Mock is a very, poor, is, uh, they're very poor, uh, powerful tools. We're just going to do a very simple example for now, right? So how do I start? Um, the first thing that I do is, you know, I call the mock function, right? I will indicate here, which is the module that I want to mock. It's going to be the Stripe API, right? Uh, just for you to, to have it here. Uh, it, this is outside of my uh, folder. Let me just double check the path. Yeah, take it outside. This is here, right? And then what I'm going to do, right, um, I can just mock that and it's just going to replace the whole module with a default mock function. Again, the mock functions, they have certain built in features such as counting the times that are being called, who call it, with which parameters and so on and so on. But I'm going to provide my own implementation of the mock, right? Um, so for uh, TypeScript and uh, you know JavaScript uh, ES6 uh, modules, it's super simple because when you import a module, just basically importing an object that has a bunch of members. It is a little bit different for common ES modules, but that's outside of the scope of this conversation, right? So I'm just gonna return, you know, a function with this very same name, right? I'm gonna return a mock because I'm probably interested to know you know, some stats regarding if this was called, if it wasn't called, which parameters and so on and so on. And um, I create a mock there and I return, you know, I return uh, what is going to be the actual function that is going to be replacing this one, right? We know that it's going to inherit the properties of a mock, but at, this, at the same time, I'm going to indicate what's going to return. For now, it's going to return an empty array. An empty array. Uh, it's going to be a promise. Remember that these are awaitable functions, so it has to be a promise. So if I do this, if I save this, and I'm just going to do a debug in here, console log of my results, right? If I do a console log of my results, okay. So I'm running a code here. I'm run. I'm running the test. And by the way, I install, I follow the TypeScript, uh, you know, steps there on uh, on Jest in order to make it work with TypeScript. Okay, so what does it say here? Um, Stripe API uh, fetch invoices by date is not a function. Right. Let's see. Fetch invoices by date not a function. All right. I put wrong the name of. It's actually this name that I want to mock on the module. Save this, I'm removing this. Let's try the test again. All right, it ran, it ran the test, right? It says let one pass because I have one test here, one uh, dummy test. And the results is this console log, which it yields to zero, right? Of course, it yields to zero because I'm not returning any, um, you know, any type of uh, result, right? So let's start building our use cases, right? So once I replace a mock, right? When this is a mock, I can do a couple of things, right? First of all, let's do this, the simple example, which is I'm going to create an invoice. Let's call this invoice one, right? Uh, let's see this auto completes like almost everything. Right, let's, let's open my invoice type. So I'm on do, pay remaining. Just gonna put an ID. Let's call this uh, one, right? And then I'm gonna complete my other fills. User ID, let's go also put this as one. 
created let's put the state currency usd right so i'm creating my invoice right all oh, right this is an object here let me just get rid of this have to put this here right so instead of um you know returning an empty array i'm just going to create my invoices array and that's what i'm going to return just for you to see that i'm manipulating the mock right here where i'm defining the mock so i run my test I see a console log now it tells me some numbers which it should be the accumulation of this right so now i know that i can manipulate my test right so i can do multiple tests you know simulating multiple invoices and now i can actually you know compare the results of uh what i'm expecting with a given set of uh of invoices which allows me again to test this logic from here right um so uh, that way we can check if we have uh, errors. Of course, this logic is pretty simple. Maybe it's not worth the test at this point, but uh, you know, if it, if it's the purpose, right? So there is one more thing, one last thing that you need to learn about, uh, you know, mocks, right? <coughs> of course, if we want to test multiple scenarios, like creating multiple files for a mock, it just maybe doesn't make sense, right? what i would like to do is being able to change in a per test case scenario different invoices that i want to uh i want the, the the mock to return in order for simulating multiple scenarios right for now the only thing that i could do is probably uh you know do something like this you know to match object right total amount should be 100 total amount pay should be right and total remaining should be this so if i run this test should be you know pretty neat and sweet right i'm going to remove this dummy test because i don't need it anymore so let's go to here right so there is a um one last part that i wanted to teach you right uh this very powerful property for mocks which is the return values right once i create a mock here a mock instance I could indicate, uh, you know, what's the value that the mock is going to return, right? So let's try, let's try to use this value return once from the mock that we just had, right? So instead of defining all the invoices that I want here, I'm going to define that on the task just to make it a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more contextual, right? So let me, I'll switch this through here, right? I'll define the invoices here. So the, as a default, it's going to return nothing, right? So I, I, I'm actually, I'm going to test that case, right? If it doesn't return anything, this should be zero, zero, and zero. So I'm going to go ahead and then create a different test. I'm just copy and paste this here. I'm just going to copy and test should be zero 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 when no invoices just to provide a little bit of a hint there right i'm going to create a different test and i'm going to say here i'm going to create different invoices right this is invoice one let's create invoice two let's say that the amount due is the amount paying and maybe this amount due is a negative number right amount pay was zero and remaining balance is minus 10 right just to give it a little bit of uh you know excitement i guess uh, i'm gonna add here the invoice two and if i do the same thing right again remember that we haven't changed whether our mock is gonna return this i'm gonna put this as global variables just because i'm just gonna reuse it i don't care to test that in here, um, let's put, you should support negative balances. So if I try to run this, of course, I'm going to get an error, right? First test is going to pass. The second test is going to fail. Oh, 
I think that oh I think that <clears throat> yeah I put zero zero area but this if we have this and this the total amount due should be 90 right total amount paid should be still 100 and the remaining should be negative 10 right let's run the test again that second one should fail of course it won't give you the correct amount because now I'm not using these invoices. I'm using the ones that are stuck here. So back to this super useful mock return body ones, right? I'm just going to import this reference, the reference to this function, right? You see this imported here. I'm going to say dot mock return value ones, right? Remember that this function, it is in fact a mock, right? So mock return value ones promise dot resolve the invoices. Of course, this is not very friendly uh, with TypeScript, right? He doesn't understand that this is a mock. I believe that I could, I think that I could do, I can import mock from Yes. Mm -mm -mm. I think that we have mock options, right? Uh, let me see. Mock. Perhaps there is a type that we can import to transform that. It's mock function. Maybe. But anyway, uh, for now, I don't think that that's important. I'm just going to make this ignore the typing problem here and I'm going to run my test just to see if this is actually working as expected. Now it's working, right? Now I force my mock to return these values and you know, after I run this function, the resulting values should match this. Right? That way I'm creating a task that goes around an external API where I can simulate data coming from the API in order to know different use cases and different scenarios to see if my code is actually working, right? Uh, you know, a good big, pra big practice will be, you know, test this in a production environment or a test, sorry, a testing environment, see what goes wrong. And, you know, whatever, uh, you know, use case goes wrong, you take that data, you save it or you ask for it or you save it and you create a new unit test where you can uh, you know, put all the data, figure out what's going on, make all the adjustments, and then just uh, you know, deploy back a new, better version of your API. So uh, cool guys, this is it for today. Uh, make sure to hit the like button or leave any comments if you, if you enjoyed this video or if you wanna see any other content from me. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope this uh, works for you. I hope uh, you know this uh, becomes as helpful as it's been for me in these past few years. Um, just let me know in the comments. Thank you and goodbye.